Probably on a, about every three months um, would be a good time to turn the compost with the total composting period for cattle. Nine months is, is, is pretty average, the length of time that it takes in, in our, our Canadian climate to, um, to start a compost pile. The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Well, traditionally, rendering has been the, the main method for disposal of, of beef cattle. It has some major advantages, no muss, no fuss, rapid um, removal of the, the dead stock from your farm, and which limits the disease transmission on farm. But after BSC, the cost of rendering has, well, there is a cost now, and the cost um, is, is substantial and in some areas uh, there may may not be uh, rendering available so it's not not in all locations there's also a minimum um, volume of dead stock required before before the renderer will come come do a pickup so there's a few disadvantages An another method that's not too common is is incineration which is used in in um, high, very high risk diseases, high cost method, amazing disease control, but um, most incinerators, commercial incinerators are designed for the poultry industry, so they're too small for use with um, cattle. Burial is uh, also used. It, it, um, the biggest problem with burial is that you need to have, have an adequate site prepared to to use um, that has some cost. You also have to consider groundwater um, as well, and it is not possible to, to dig dig a bear like a site for burial in in winter. So it has to be pre-prepared. Um, you have to have have everything ready so that you have sufficient space to to um, bury your cattle. Uh, uh, another method which is used uh, but is not legal in all parts of Canada is natural exposure where carcasses are just left for scavengers to consume. It's easy but um, there's downsides, there's no disease control and environmental contamination risks are high. Work that uh, we've done here in, at, at Lethbridge has, has uh, evaluated composting for disposal of, of beef cattle carcasses. Composting re relies on um, a really active microbial population to degrade the carcasses and also offers um, very good disease, disease control on farm. Um, so one of the drawbacks though is that it takes active management of your compost. It, it's work, it uh, requires, requires some inputs. Costs are, are low uh, because the material and equipment are, are things that can usually be found on most farms. Okay. And another um, method that's on the horizon but still still being studied is, is biodigestion, which offers the chance of collecting some renewable energy from the carcasses, but it's is yet to be, be widely adopted by, by producers. Okay. Um, composting, first you need to have sources of carbon and nitrogen and uh, the nitrogen comes from the carcasses but the carbon source can be something like straw, um, manure also has some carbon in it, sawdust works as a, as a carbon source. The work we've done has, has used manure um, extensively as it uh, for on-farm composting, most most um, people would have a source of manure, and it also is necessary if you're doing winter composting. You need to have some stockpiled manure that is actively heating, as when it's uh, minus 20, minus 40, 
a compost pile is not going to fire, like it's not going to start heating unless some constituent of the compost that as you build it is, is already warm. So it's the easiest thing is to have a set of, have some stockpiled manure. Before you start composting, of course, you need to um, contact your local local authorities and have the the site with adequate setbacks and whatever local regulations that that are required to be to be followed. You need to have a a site that you can access all year round, easily easily accessible, but is um, away from your livestock. To to actually start a compost pile, uh, the way we have commonly done it on farm would be to lay a bed of straw um, usually about um, the thickness of the height of, of, of one one uh, like small square bale would <laughs> would probably be nice you want a good bed of straw then you lay the carcasses on their side on that um, bed of straw you don't want the carcasses to touch you need to have some spacing between the carcasses probably about uh, at least that distance between them. The, if they touch, it's for some reason they, that part that's touching doesn't, doesn't degrade. And then um, manure can be layered over. So you add enough manure to completely cover the carcasses. Uh, you want to not be able to tell, like, dis tell the shape of carcasses underneath your manure pile. And you want to slope it so that rain Rain does not collect on on the on the windrow as either. Uh, behind me, there are a windrow design is nice as you can just keep adding on more carcasses onto the end of the pile and cover them and and go. Moisture is a consideration. If it's too wet or too dry, uh, the compost will not will not heat um, well but uh, the best way to, is the squeeze test with, with manure. Uh, when you take a ball of the, like take a handful of the manure you're planning to use, you squeeze it and, and moisture comes out, it's too wet. If you can take it and drop it and it um, makes, there's a ball, but it crumbles when it, on impact hitting the ground, then that's probably about, about right. Some other uh, points of consideration to know that if your compost is working, it's important to, to measure the temperature of the compost. Uh, it's not that difficult to do. There are the long um, stainless steel temperature probes that are used for, for measuring heating in, in grain bins. Those, those work very well. If your compost is properly set up, it, after, being, um, after being constructed, the pile should heat to uh, somewhere around 50 degrees Celsius within, um, within a few days after construction of the pile. If, it, if the compost does not heat or if it starts smelling bad, then you know you've got, you know you've got problems. Uh, there may be, may be too wet, not enough oxygen getting to the pile, or there may not be enough moisture there. It's not easy to add moisture to a compost pile after it's already been constructed, so it's much, much better to uh, use materials with the with the appropriate moisture levels. Uh, once you've got your pile constructed, another important consideration is you, you need to turn the pile to mix it and and that also helps to break down the carcasses and and uh, break down the bones. Uh, the bones may look like they are intact but actually after a few months in the compost pile they are demineralized, they will shatter um, so turning, turning the pile also helps to break the bones. It's not necessary to, to have like a commercial compost turner, just a front end loader can, can work uh, where you just use, go in with a bucket, pick it up, the bucket is hard, high as it can go and then drop it into the new location and that um, by moving and dropping that's sufficient to turn, turn the pile. Probably on a, about every three months um, would be a good time to turn the compost with the total composting period for cattle nine months is 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 pretty average the length of time that it takes in in our our Canadian climate to um, to start a compost pile
Okay. One of the questions I always get about mortality composting is what to do about the bones. And if you're careful to keep the carcasses covered, the, the amount of bones that will be left at the end of composting should, should be fairly small. But when the compost is turned, you need to be careful to add some extra, some new fresh manure on the outside so that those bones are not exposed to, the bones that are still remaining are not exposed to sunlight. Once bones are exposed to sunlight, they, they are there forever. They are hardened, uh, they will not degrade in, in composting. But if it's um, the mixing, turning of the compost helps, helps with the de degradation and most, most bones should, should degrade. If bones are not degrading, if, if people are being left with a, a lot of bones in their compost pile, that's a sign that there's something lacking in the setup. Either it's the compost is not heating sufficiently or they're not giving enough time for the composting period, trying to rush things along. But provided that enough time and enough heat, uh, the vast majority of bones should, should degrade.